Hey there, fellow plant nerds and design nerds. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Garden Rescue. Uh, we are in the Lady Designers Malin Zoo. You may have seen this one on YouTube already. It is a pretty large, um, and I would say it, it has some has some uh, realistic moments to it. Uh, but really, it's it's super stylized and and quite beautiful. It's located in a very forested uh, zoo. Uh, you can see her giant panda exhibit here. And what this series is going to focus on is this area and the idea for garden rescue is to go into other people's parks and kind of build and design and explain why i came up with the solutions that i did um in this particular instance there is a bit of a lack of grandeur and really um a, a lack of coziness too and i think that's one of the first things i want to uh, address is the 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 lack of grandeur and the coziness and i think the the big problem here is that this house um, while the glass roof is nice i think it's actually hindering the beautiful shot of the domes um so we're gonna fix that second thing is pathing um the pathing is is enormous um which you kind of do need for for zoos and if we look at the connection points here the ramp is just way too steep um, that would be difficult to traverse uh, for a normal human. We tend to like to walk on things no more than about three or four degrees in elevation. So they'll, we'll fix that too. The other problem is uh, for the macaque exhibit especially, she did a great job with the, the playground and everything, but there is no like in or out. It's just kind of there. Um, there's no protection or i'm not i'm not getting the feeling of where this particular animal uh hails from which is and i did a little research on this uh northern honshu uh which i believe is the third island in the japanese island chain and then the fourth thing is the same kind of lushness um and it's not i don't want to have the same kind of lushness that we have over here um, this combination of trees is all right but it's not necessarily going to give me the same look that i that i want to go for um, I want a look a little bit closer to what you would see in Northern Honshu, which is very green, very deciduous, with a few um, evergreens poking up here and there, but it's really, really well forested. Uh, a lot of smooth rock with a lot of green growing on it. Um, so I think that is what we're going to do. All right, here's the start that I came up with. Um, I've got the paths a little bit further in. Uh, hopefully not so much that the macaques can escape. Because <laughs> I have noticed that that's a thing that can happen, is that these, these little buggers, they uh, they like to jump around. Um, but I've got the, the path kind of winding, undulating a little bit, and then I've got these little observation points, which I really think are, are pretty cool. And they are standard path types. I've also got this um, elevated observation deck too, which I think is pretty cool, because when you get get down here you can really get to see the macaques and then when you get up here you get to see a little bit more of the overall exhibit uh get a better view and also a beautiful view of those domes again remove that that glass roof there the rock work is meant to be a combination of uh, a little bit of terrain and then also lots of jagged uh very upright rocks there there's a little cove here with a with a um trickling it's supposed to be like trickling down the rock face. It's, it's hard to achieve. I don't know if I've totally achieved it there, but we'll stick with that for now. And then I wanted to show you guys, um, because if you've played the game, you already know that this is the standard size for a the smallest normal walking path for people. Um, so how did I get how did I get two meter paths on the nubs here? And you'll also notice how did I get three meter paths on the staircase? Well, <laughs> because uh, Planet Zoo shares the same path system as Planet Coaster, I have a few tricks to teach you. Smallest normal path that you can get in this game just by placing the, the tools down. This is the smallest path in the game. This is a queue. This is two meters. And this one, you can do ramps at two meters. Um, and then the next one, three meters, is another queue type and you can do stairs at this one and they'll still function. So how do I do it? Well, here's the really basic way. So I place out 
just place out a few of these. And then to get a three meter path, I will go to Q and I'm going to float it in here somewhere. I'm going to create a path nub and then I'm not going to continue. I'm gonna go back to my regular paths and I'm gonna finish that off. Now, if I do that again, it's gonna do the same thing. So Q and then Q to set the actual line, take the path, do it again. Again, Q, and then this is where it's it a little tricky. Q, and then path, and do it again. So that's how you get straight paths, fairly simple. You can also do curved paths this way. It just takes a little bit of time. And why would you want a smaller path? Well, sometimes, in certain designs, you don't want something that is just enormous and is kind of taking up the scale of your area. So this again, once again, I'm going to have it curve this direction. So I'm going to start over here. And then I'm going to take my path nub and go instead of straight, I'm going to go off to the side, connect, do it again, and do that again, off, and then when you deselect them, the path stays right where it is. So you can get smaller paths this way that people will actually traverse. But how did I do the stairs? Now the stairs, I will admit they are very tricky because you have to do this method on multiple levels to get them to, to kind of work like that. But I'll show you how I did at least the first level. Okay, so again, we're going to start with a path nub, and then we're going to pull it up so it becomes a staircase. Then we're going to take that and pop it down, if that's where we want the first level to be. And then we're going to add just an angled piece off to the side. And then take away everything but that angled piece. Now that angled piece is super important because, as you see, you can actually create an elevated 3 meter path right there. And then you want to set that pad in place, so you firm it up with another cue. And then you create the uh, actual opening that's going to connect the staircase. Then I'm going to put this path back in. And I'm going to have the game autofill the staircase in for me, so I'm going to start with a cue. And just slowly make sure that it's lined up properly. Then take the path and autofill. Now, when I take this all away, I have a three meter staircase and a three meter path that's doing exactly what I want. So to do the next line, you do the same thing. Up, over, and make that angle bit. Take that away, take that away. Add the path firm up the platform, create the connection. And then I might have to do this on the bottom one too because you notice that it's actually ramping up and that's that's a useful, uh, it's a useful tool too, but I want it to be a staircase. So I'm gonna take that cue again, firm up that connection point, connect it with a path, delete all the cue. And that, is how you get tiny staircases in the game. Isn't that cool? So we've gotten a little further on the macaque exhibit here. Um, you can see I've started with my plant palette. And my plant palette consists of this bamboo, this, uh, I think it's called crowberry in the game, but I use it as a sort of filler moss. Uh, some grasses, because there are literally grasses in every design. Um, and then some fountain bamboo for the shorter ones. Um, and then a bunch of ferns right there and really really hugging the walls like that and I wanted to show you um, I want to show you how I did this particular thing because I find that this is really important when you are kind of designing really vertical or really squished uh, kind of spaces so in the game we have Ivy uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. where is it yeah we have Ivy right here we have an Ivy patch and that's great um, but when you try to apply it to a three-dimensional surface, mm, it's not super effective. It looks a little fake. 
So the way that I have found to uh, make small spaces work is to take things like the crowberry bush. And when you place it on the ground, you can see that it's fairly flat, it's fairly round, you can layer it up, and that's all well and good. Um, but what I want to use it for is I want to get it on these rocks, and I don't want it to just sit out like, like a bunch of toupees on the rocks. I want it to actually follow the form. So this is where this button comes in, align to surface. And this is an awesome tool when you're first setting kind of these uh, bushes, because I can get them squeezed in a little bit and I can make it look like it's the greenery is just draped through the rocks. In my source material you can see a lot of green plants that are just hugging to the rocks because they've grown there for ages and so I want to kind of create that look. So align to surface helps me do that because it, it starts aligning it to the rock. Now you can go, you can push it in a little bit and that creates a little bit uh, sparser of a look. You can pull it out and it creates a little bit more fuller of a look. So once you have one set, you can duplicate it and be sure to turn off the apply to surface or align to surface. And then you just kind of squeeze it in the cracks a little bit there. And that way there's just a little bit of green fuzz popping out. You know, it looks like it's kind of aligned to the rock and you can, like I said, you can push it in, which makes it look a little sparser, like it's clinging. And that's a really easy way to kind of green up and soften your lines. You can do this on rocks, you can do this on buildings. Um, this actually makes a great kind of ivy substitute if you don't want the really flat stuff. So I've gone a little further here and I've introduced uh, a new bridge. Um, this is based off of a bridge in northern Honshu. Um, it's supposed to be a really well photographed bridge too. Um, and then I also have some new foliage here, but still using the same techniques. I'm still greening up my rocks like that. I'm putting grass towards the bottom where it would be happier. Um, I've included some evergreens because they are nice and stately and they also, they're bringing out that really nice like cinnamon red, which I love because it's, it's playing off of the bridge here. And you may notice that the, the path arc on here is very smooth. It, it tops out here and then it very gently kind of leans on either side. And how did I do that? Well, I've got a little setup over here. So to make this particular bridge, at least to start it, what I did was place some of these uh, flat blocks where I want the bridge to peak and where I want it to end on both sides. And once again, I'm going to take out my path tool. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is create three separate nubs. And I'm just gonna get it right in there. Select the first one. And then I'm going to hit control and shift and raise it again. And I'm gonna create a new path nub. I'm gonna try and get it as centered as possible in the square here. That's my little guide. And I'm gonna do the same for number three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the game's um, propensity to autocomplete, like you can see right there. But I'm going to autocomplete all of the bridge pieces. So for, to keep this nice and straight, I'm going to hit angle snap, and I'm going to make sure that my angle is good, connect, and again, make sure that my angle is good. Now in this one, this one's a little tricky because you can kind of see where it, where it uh, fell right there. You can see that, that it's peaking right here now instead of, instead of giving me one solid piece, so I need to bring that over to the source, and what it should do, yeah. You see that right there? It just snapped right back into place. So, now I can remove my rulers. And I have a path bridge that just arcs up ever so gently and falls back down. So I showed you how to get pretty smooth bridges with single peak and very straight, but how do you do something like this with a ramp? Well, that's the next level of complexity of path design. This really ended up just being a path tutorial, um, but it works. So what I've done is I've built a little example for you here, how smooth you can actually get these elevated paths, because if you try to do it with just the normal game tools, it ain't gonna go well. But that is, that's the angle that you get. And that is just too, that's too steep. So we can do better. 
and this is probably the the hardest one because it it does factor in a bunch of uh, things we've already learned. But I'm going to show you anyway. So this is the monorail uh, from the game, and I have designed it so that it curves at a fairly constant rate, and it descends at about three degrees um, consistently all the way down. And so. I need to be able to translate this ruler into this path. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some kind of height marker. And what I typically use is the African branch because it is thin enough. You can kind of form it into place. And you're just going to mark where every support is. About to the top of the support. Okay, that's all of them set there. Then what I'm going to do is close out of this for a second. I'm going to click on the monorail, hit X to open up the advanced move. I'm going to push it way up in the air so that only the... Whoa! So that only the uh, supports are showing. And then what I'm going to do is open up my path tool. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the previous bridge. I'm going to start a bunch of different path nubs. And so I'm going to bring it up to the height marker of that uh, wood piece. And then I'm going to center it on the support. And then I need to skip one because it just works better that way. So I'll do the next one. Bring it up to the height and center it. And then what I need to do is actually close out of the path tool, open it back up to refresh it, and then do the same thing. Holding control, creating a new, a new path nub. Click it. Okay. So you can see my path nubs. They are pretty much mirroring that uh, perfect curve. And then all you have to do is connect the dots. So take your path tool out, make sure the angle, angle snap is off because otherwise it'll mess with you. And then you just need to kind of finagle it so that it does what you want. And if you've done this correctly, you can get the ramp to be continuous. It's finicky, but the results are worth it. Because now when I click out of it, there is my single smooth curved path. And that makes it so much easier <laughs> to justify like raising the path or anything like that because it just, it just looks good. Um, it's more realistic. And the reason why I focus so much on pathing, especially in this first episode instead of the, uh, the aspects of the garden, is that design and form is even more important than the material that you use. Um, so the, the beds and the trees and all that, the, the way that you experience it as a person in a zoo or a botanical garden or something like that, that is so much more important. The discovery of the garden and the way that it is revealed to you. And for a lot of that, that is, that is going to be through the path system. And that can be the most frustrating part of the Planet Series games. And hopefully this kind of gives you hope that you can make your paths look a lot better. <laughs> and you can do the same method when you are trying to create really smooth slopes. And for this one, I actually learned this from Rudy, uh, from Rudy Rankamel. Uh, I'm gonna go back to terrain. Terrain stamp. Oops, hit the wrong button. I'm gonna use that terrain stamp. I'm going to then hit X. And I'm just going to use this uh, ride platform as a ruler. So make sure the angle looks nice and good. Make sure it's fitting on there. Looks pretty good. Maybe knock it up a little bit. Then commit. Then take your sculpting tool, flatten to surface, and continue to run that up. Whoop. That one's a little... And then if you want to get real technical, this is the this is the way I figured out to smooth, is that you just kind of pull the mouse towards you, push the mouse away from you, and make sure it lines up with the track. And here we are with people actually traversing the beautiful uh, Honshu Bridge there. Oh, that's lovely. Um, I added a little particle effects in the river here so that it actually looks like uh, the, the water is flowing. 
Um, in Roller or Roller Coaster Tycoon, whew, that's old. In Planet Coaster, we used to use the uh, the River Rapids ride to get that effect. But here, the particle effects are so good that the it's pretty effective. And then this is the big uh, change. And so I, as I was kind of researching uh, Northern Honshu, I noticed that Sea Stacks, um, a geological formation where a column of stone is intact um, and it, it can even still have a forest on top of it. So that's exactly what I did here is I formed those rocks into a sea stack um, and then added some cypress at the very top, but I used a design term called force perspective to make it feel like it's a lot bigger than it actually is. Because if we look at how big it, it really is, we're only looking at about a 60 foot uh, possibly uh, probably shorter than that probably about 50 foot uh tower see you can see people using my little uh, observation deck um i didn't quite understand how this game functions and now that i do i think i might have to get rid of these observation decks because um they're gonna get they're gonna get lost the the, the people are gonna get lost they're they're not gonna be able to get back so the way the game works, um, you may have already figured this out if you have the game, is people want to get as close to the animals as possible, so they're looking for their pathfinding to certain points, so that's why they are all... <laughs> uh, well, that guy, they, they left just fine. Um, but yeah, that, that may have to change. <laughs> Whoops. So that's where we're going to leave it. Um, normally we would have a big reveal uh, at the end of these episodes, however, um, because this is the first episode and because I have done it in uh, such a prominent YouTuber's park, the full reveal is actually going to be tomorrow um, and it's going to be in a sort of tour style. And so she has been very good to not look at what I've done um, and I will just say that this is only a fraction of what I ended up doing at the very end. But I wanted to show you the concepts behind what you're going to see tomorrow. And uh, hopefully I have taught you a few things that might help you build your own zoos. So that about wraps it up today. If you liked what you saw today, you know what to do. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy the series because I enjoy working in other people's parks and... Um, we actually did just have the tour today, uh, me and Delay Designer, and it was <laughs> it was a good reaction, I'll say that. <laughs> so I'm very excited for you guys to, to hear our conversation tomorrow. So until next time, I'll see you later, guys.